Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Kim. Hi, Eric. <clears throat> Hi, Mom, he says. Hello. <laughs> um, gosh, you know, I've got so many things that I should talk about. Um, maybe I'll just let you, uh, let you uh, pick one of these. One is the importance of boundaries. I think we've covered that before. The other is what to do if you're raised by haters. I was. Another is talking about euthanasia. And uh, another one is how do we tap into zero point energy, the free, abundant, uh, it, it, you know, infinitely abundant energy? Which one do you want? Dealer's choice. He says, um, he says, Mom, let's talk about haters. He says, um, well, let me just tell you that I was raised by by two people that just hated everyone and everything. Well, almost. I'm, you know, exaggerating to make a point. But even at, on the TV, they'd make fun of people who were overweight. And they just everything was just negative, negative, negative. And it really can bring you down, man. It was just, uh, and especially when that was inflicted to to me personally. Yeah. He's, he's talking so fast and giving a lot of information. Um Okay, so he says, first of all, being raised by or even dealing, just dealing with haters um, in your life, um, he says, as hard as it can be, because there, there's some nasty people out there that can just be downright cruel, um, he says, before you react, um, it's important to know and understand that in any way that they hate on you <clears throat> or even try to get you to be like them um, and you know kind of jump on board with their um, the things that they hate or bully against he says um, what they're doing is projecting their insecurities he's showing like energetically like you guys have heard me use this reference before um, Eric shows this all the time like um, Years ago, when the Care Bears cartoon was still on TV, and they oh, would yeah. stare, and then like all that color would come out of their belly. Uh huh. So energetically, he's showing the same thing. But like with haters, what they do is they project their own insecurity out towards others. So, for example, if somebody is hating on someone that's overweight, he says that's because that's something they could never accept in themselves. Hmm. If they're hating on someone because you know they've got a certain color hair. It's because they would be insecure like that. It's they're showing their own insecurities. Um, and also, he says, Mom, this is hugely fear-based. Um, so, again, for example, if someone's hating on someone who's overweight, um, it's because they are afraid of that being them or having to have that identity. So that's why they'll, why they'll criticize and hate on it. Also, too, Mom, he says you have to, when we talk about haters in any sense, he says you have to acknowledge ignorance. Because ignorance says, I don't want to understand, I don't want to know, um, this is who I am, this is what I think. Um, so it's very fear-based. And if, if somebody um, approaches hate or hates on somebody else for whatever reason, um, it's because of their inability to open up and understand. Um, he says, so, oh, that makes me sad. He, Eric said that he dealt with haters, like people bullying him. Yeah. Um, and he's just like, he's going like this. So this is my symbol for, um, this defines me, that this is me or what I went through. Um, he says, he says he went through a lot of it. People, people, some people made fun of him because they were afraid of him. They didn't get him. Mm -hmm. um, he says, and then he's talking so fast. Slow down, and, Eric. Yeah, he's like, and then too, you got to acknowledge their biofield. He's like, people that um, focus on their hate and and regurgitate it over and over. He said their 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 energy field just gets huge because they focus on it and they share it. They put it out there so much. So that's why. If you spend time with a hater or someone who's negative, it can fuck you up, he says. It gets you feeling all shitty and like, oh my gosh, like I got to get away from this person. They're so yeah. negative. He says it's because they're, they're um, and it's just the same for somebody who is in love 
resides in love instead of fear. He says, when you truly resonate in love, that type of person's energy feels, he says, therapeutic. Yeah. Well, you know, it seems like the haters, it's also about uh, wanting to be in power, a, a position of power and control. And it's so weird because why is it that people think that being nasty is, you know, is more powerful than being loving? And loving is considered in our society sort of a weak thing by some, by many. He says, um, he says it's true, Mom, and it's exactly right. He says, it, it again, it comes from fear. Um, when people are nasty towards others, they have that fear. Um, and, you know, projecting that anger, that hate, whatever it may be, gives them a false sense of empowerment, um, of, like, having a foot up. He says... Um, yeah, because you're putting yourself in a position of superiority over the person you're mo you're putting your pushing your hate toward exactly and so I said well well why does um, why do people have a hard time just being love just you know being love instead of being hate and why do they see that as weak yeah um, he says it all goes back to control and ego and how control feels secure um, but it's false. It's always going to be fleeting and make you feel like you got to do it again. You got to do yeah. it again. Um, he says being being vulnerable and actually, he says once you experience like letting go and and surrendering that need for control and bullying and hate. Once you actually surrender that and let go of judging um, because of ego. And he says, if you just experience that freedom one time, I promise you, you'll never want to go back to the old you, the sourness in you. Um, so he's challenging people. He's like, I encourage you when you're about to say, look at that shitty fucking parking job. Look at that. You know, he says, um, instead of just throwing out that criticism and that hate, because he says, think about it like this too, people. doesn't matter where you are, but you just expressed negative energy it's there it exists now it's yeah. in and it can snowball and just get bigger so especially in a <laughs> he says especially in a room mom you know like if you just walked into a room that's empty but two people just had a fight in that room and they're not there anymore I was just gonna ask that you can you feel that negative energy yeah, he says it, it like snowballs and it um, resonates in that area until it's cleared somehow, yeah. some way. Um, but it's the same thing. He says, so if you, if you express that towards anybody, um, you're collectively contributing to the vibration of the universe. So he's like, I challenge you, before you talk about um, how your neighbor, you know, your shitty neighbor does this or that, um, Yep, they might. It sucks, but um, don't have control. Like it's that complaining is that need for control. I think they should this instead. So he says, let go of that. Um, he says he shrugs his shoulders. He's like, it is what it is. Take yeah. life day at a time and let life happen. Um, and, and let people be who they are. You know, that's an important mantra that a lot of haters should should uh, recite. I'm going to let that person be who they are. You know what he said? Um, this is such a beautiful example that he wants to share. Um, he says, for people that hate on, and he's just talking, you know, because this is probably the most, one of the most popular ways, I guess. Um, for people that hate on somebody because they're overweight, he says, think about it like this. That person may be a little overweight, according to the doctors. They may be carrying a little, he says, they may be carrying a little extra junk in their trunk. But if that person is secure in who they are and can give love, what makes you more beautiful just because you don't carry that junk in your trunk? Yeah. And then he says, you're projecting your fear of not being able to handle being like that. So you have to be able to see yourself in what you're hating on. Because we're all connected. It is a part of you. Like that person you're hating on is a part of you and vice versa. So, um, yeah, we're all part in, in, in whole of, of the whole of God's source. Exactly. 
Well, so, okay. What what uh, what about love being seen as a weakness? Why is that? Anything that has to do with any facet of love, it's like, oh, you're such a sap, and you're, you know. He says, um, he says it's true. Love, love is still seen as a weakness if and, you lack self to be vulnerable. The, the vulnerability behind love is mm -hmm. what people consider weak. Yeah, he says it's changing though. It's shifting because people realize it's one. He says it's more comfortable. Two, it's easier to sustain. People are realizing, shit, it takes a lot out of me to to feel this nasty and negative all yeah. the time. I can't stand it. So he says. Um, but again, it's people feel like if they just reside in love, they let go of control and they surrender. People feel like they're surrendering, surrendering personal power. And that's where they get confused. Um, you're not supposed to have power over others. He says that was never intended. Um, inner power is a whole different concept. So you can maintain that, he says. But when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, let go of trying to be um, powerful over others. Um, that's the difference, Mom. That's the confusion. Ah. Still have personal power, um, but it is never meant to be over another. And you have uh, more personal power when you reside in love. But then you have to worry about other people's reactions to the love that you give. He says, um, he says that's the illusion, Mom. When you surrender and let go of power over others, you do strengthen in your own personal power. So that's the illusion people aren't quite getting it. So when they do align with their own personal power um, and reside in love, true love, he says, um, you don't question how others react because it's kind of, he says, it's like saying if, if you know your intentions are pure, um, then he kind of just cut himself off. He says, then it will be. It will be pure. So even if others, mom, can't accept your pure love or your vulnerability, that's their insecurity. That's them showing their insecurity to you. Okay. Um, so he's just like, he goes, I know. It can seem all fucked up sometimes. But he says, we're getting it. We're getting there. I we're hope changing. so. He says, I because... We're realizing how tiring it is to be nasty. I know it is. It's, don't uh, don't be haters, people. It takes way too much work, and I know you guys are all lazy bums out there. But <laughs> uh, so, last uh, thing I want to know is if you've been raised by haters like I have. You know that can do a lot of damage, I'm sure, to self-esteem and all that. What can you do? First of all, what can you do if you've had the if you've had the onslaught of hate all your life? And how can you protect yourself if you're in that situation now? If you're like, a, a, you know, have parents that are haters right now or in a relationship with a hater. Yeah. He says, um, this is a pretty neat concept. This is when you need to ask for um, and like reconnect to your inner child, he says. Um, because if you if you stay there and connect there, it's a high vibratory place. Um, and then you know, as you're raised by haters and maybe they say or do negative things, you ask yourself, does it feel like light or does it feel like dark? Does it feel good? Does it not feel good? Then you know, it's up to you. He says, as far as what you will host. And, and then he says, too, it's all about your intentions. So he says, other people can, can raise you and spread shit, he says, and um, be negative and nasty to you and, and make you think that you are, you know, um, not good looking or whatever it may be, that you're not smart. Um, but he says... It is up to you if you're going to actually bring in and host that belief as your own. And then that's where you got to play with the inner child and let the inner child come out and say, nope, that's what you think, not me. Mm -hmm. um, he says it's, it's a very innocent mindset that basically is just connected to self. Yeah, what's, what comes out of you bounces off of me and sticks to you. Exactly. <laughs> that kind of thing. Let the inner child say that. Yeah, he says it's so true though, Mom. He says... Um, because 
we what we do is we listen you know if we're raised by or even living with people that are um, hateful he says we listen and then we truly have a choice and it's real quiet mom he says that voice is real subtle but that voice will say to you either yeah I believe or I don't believe that I know I'm not that okay. so it's up to you as far as what he keeps saying the word host are you gonna host that shit are you gonna bring it in and say yeah bring that negative shit in here and let's have a party and he's saying, oh, I'm here. Um, or are you going to close the door on it and say, nope, not here? So he says, this is a tough one, though, to have that discernment. He says, people people have a hard time because they, back to what you were saying, they feel like others may have power from somewhere or something. And, well, they're saying that for a reason, so I should believe it, um, he says. But you have to remember, you know you best. Is there anything to say to the haters, or you just do all this inner work? He says no, because if you say to the haters, if you even react, you are um, stepping into that pool, yeah. like a negative pool, he says. Um, so what you do, he's kind of smiling, he says what you do in these cases when somebody's hating on you is um, instead of reacting, it's kind of like, it's almost like having um, pity for them because they don't even understand their own beauty, ah. their own essence of who they are. Because if they truly did, Mom, they wouldn't say that other shit about other people, he says. Um, so it's, it's actually really sad when people feel like they need to hate on others. Um, he says... It is sad. And sometimes, sad. sometimes you can almost act like a reporter like ob observing their behavior and you can you can say inwardly or, or, or outwardly hmm how odd that you should say something like that it's like huh I'm, I'm taking all this and observing it and you know reacting to it in an emotionally detached way or one thing I also found uh, effective is pretend like you have a plexiglass shield in front of your face and then it's just any insult that comes out just blink 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 just blinks off the plexiglass and falls to the ground so those those kind of things help he says yeah there's there's all sorts of um, protection that you can in, envision for yourself um, and he's he's just kind of talking about the hater too and like the um, he says he says always remember people um, love is stronger than hate and it can diffuse hate yeah. so if somebody gives you nasty shit he says um, you can because it's like this is what he shows me like <clears throat> here comes a fastball of negativity and I can catch it before it actually comes into me and you know just turn it around and and get surround it in love and send it back mm -hmm. so right um, to his face I'm just kidding yeah <laughs> right Thanks. to his consciousness mom there we go <laughs> Well, thank you. That was very enlightening. Really enlightening. I really like that. I he hope says, you guys, I hope so. Hope and you guys goes, enjoyed it. He's so animated today. He's like, he has his arms up like this, and he's like up in the, right up in the camera. Huh? And he's, Stop hating people. <laughs> yeah, don't be a hater. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Eric. My pleasure. Eric. You're welcome. He says, always, Mom, I'm here. I'm blowing your kisses. I love you. He says, I love you, Mom. Bye. Bye-bye.